Somebody sent me a link during the week. This is the New South Wales Government Play Safe website. You can check it out for yourself at playsafe.health.nsw.gov.au. Everything you need to know for a confident and healthy sex life. It sounds fairly innocuous, but then doing a bit of browsing, unsurprisingly, you'll come across lots of information on COVID and sex. Three ways COVID-19 has changed sex and dating. COVID-19 contact tracing and dating. What to do? Sex during COVID. What is everyone doing? But the most prominent? Is mutual masturbation the safest sex during COVID-19? Taking a look at that article, it starts by saying, let's start by saying that the only truly safe sex to be having right now is solo sex. But if you've decided that sex with other people is something you simply can't live without, then say hello to mutual masturbation. One method of mutual masturbation is the act of pleasuring yourself in front of a partner. Whilst some people consider mutual stimulation as mutual masturbation, what we're talking about here involves no contact with the other person. Yes, New South Wales residents, this is what your taxpayer dollars are paying for. Continuing, with COVID-19 spreading via respiratory drops, any sex aside from solo sex definitely carries risk due to the close proximity of another person. But masturbating with a partner, as long as you keep your distance, is the next best thing. The benefits of masturbating with a partner. As well as reducing your risk of getting COVID-19, masturbating with a partner is risk-free when it comes to STIs and unwanted pregnancies. Now that's what we call a win-win. Of course, we don't want to encourage people to get pregnant, do we? You take away the pressure, no more worrying about the other person, but instead you get to focus on your own pleasure. Yeah, that's what I always thought a good relationship was all about, focusing on yourself and ignoring your partner. And this is their how-to guide. Make sure you're both feeling well and symptom-free. Talk about your expectations up front and set the rules that work for you. Keep your distance, a minimum of 1.5 meters at all times. If you're sharing sex toys, make sure that you keep them clean by following these rules. I'm not sure what sex toys you can share at 1.5 meters distance. Knob on a stick, perhaps. Consider wearing masks to minimize the risk of COVID-19 even further, or even take the fun online. Is this where we've come as a society? The government telling us that we should have sex 1.5 meters apart while wearing masks? By the way, I would not recommend taking the fun online. I guess they mean by having a Skype session or a Zoom meeting or whatever. The problem with that is that somebody could potentially secretly record your intimate moment. Once it gets online, good luck getting it off. In other New South Wales news, Premier Gladys B is mulling a way to incentivise people to get the COVID vaccine. One potential option is to give businesses power to refuse entry to people who haven't got the vaccine. Frontline health workers will probably have to get the vaccine, and if travellers want to skip 14 days of quarantine, they'll have to get it as well. So yes, expect at least some pubs and clubs to enforce these draconian rules. Personally, if these rules do come in, I just won't be frequenting those bars. If they want to enforce stupid rules, I'll take my business elsewhere. And if the government decide to make it mandatory for all pubs and clubs, I simply will not go out. I'll save money by staying at home anyway, meaning that these businesses will miss out on my money. If you're not scared of the UK strain anymore, don't worry, there's another new strain, the Brazil variant. I don't know anything about it, but I'm sure it's more contagious and more deadly than its predecessors. How about you? Will you be following the New South Wales government's advice and practicing safe, socially distanced sex? Will you be getting a vaccine so that you can go to the pub? Will you be visiting Brazil anytime soon? Let me know.